Okay, so that video did a really good job of explaining the basic premise, but again, they left out some details. They, well, they specifically said that it, it has not been shown to interfere with a fertilized egg. So I just thought I'd share with you the evidence that it has been associated with um, interfering with the implantation of a fertilized egg. I see that this screen clip that I did uh, didn't actually bring in the year of, of publication, but this was, um, I think, 2017. Um, so basically, we've got the anti-implantation effect among emergency contraception that you know, the ba okay, so if ovulation has not occurred yet, plan B will prevent ovulation. In the meantime, it also will start contractions of the uterus so that it'll start shedding its lining, right? Well, the, if there, the egg has been released and conception does occur, that contracting of the uterus is going to prevent an implantation in an effort to make sure that it doesn't seem like it's an abortive, they're glossing over exactly how it works. And I just want you guys to know how things work. I mean, there's, you can draw whatever inferences you want from the fact that these things work the way that they work. Um, so they do actually prevent, prevent implantation. That's like the number two goal. The number one goal would be to prevent ovulation. If it has not happened, let's just keep that egg and that sperm apart. That's the number one goal is to prevent that. But if ovulation has already occurred and it's too late to trap that egg, um, then we have this secondary effect where we can prevent implantation. All right, so the effectiveness, if you take the, the emergency contraceptive pill within 24 hours of unprotected sex, there's a 5% chance that a pregnancy will occur. If you wait and take it 70 within 72 hours, so we've, you know, pushed it out a little bit, about 11% of the time, the pregnancy will actually occur. So speed is of the essence, right? We want to definitely make sure that if we're using emergency contraceptives, we're not thinking about it or wondering about it or waiting for anything. Like as soon as an unprotected intercourse has occurred um, and there is a strong desire to prevent pregnancy, the correct response is to as soon as humanly possible access emergency contraceptive pills. And in the state of Washington, where I'm teaching from, they're uh, available over the counter, you know, states vary on those kinds of things. But, you know, they went from being only prescription to being, um, you had to go up to the pharmacy counter and the pharmacist had to dole it out to now they are actually over the counter and you don't have to, you don't have to go through any kind of medical professional to access those. Um, so a lot of the barriers are gone. The biggest barrier is they are expensive. And so um, again, I will mention that they are available at Planned Parenthood, which are, tends to only be in larger cities, unfortunately, um, but they are available through um, different kinds of um, resources that might be unique to um, an individual community um, at low or no cost. The advantage is it is the only way to prevent a pregnancy when there was no method present or there was a failure of the of the method. We haven't talked about condoms yet, but a lot of times with condoms, when there's a failure, you know it because, you know, it's broken. Um, but with the other methods, um, you know, you wouldn't necessarily know that, you know, you, you had taken your pill at the wrong time or something like that. So this may not work for that, um, but it would work when there is no birth control method used or when you had uh, a broken birth control method. The disadvantage is, um, just like my student who was taking all of her pills on Friday, <laughs> um, this is a lot of hormones to be taking. And so a lot of women will report that they felt nausea, nause, nauseous is what the bad thing is. You want to say nauseated. I wanted to say nauseated. Or they might even experience vomiting, which is kind of counterproductive to the, you know, body internalizing all of the hormones from the pills. Um, some women will report that the pills will have the effect of really, really heavy bleeding, like more than a normal period. And that can kind of scare them. I think they oftentimes think that it's so much that maybe they're hemorrhaging or something really bad, but it's usually just heavy bleeding. And there's been some data that has suggested, they've said women over 165 pounds, it may not be as effective. And that's kind of not that heavy of a, of women for, for us in the U S um, they say a BMI over 30 it may not be as effective. Now, they 
once they recognize this, um, they started working on other formulations. So they maybe have, have started to fix the problem of, you know, weight related, you know, loss of effectiveness. Um, but that, that definitely has been a problem plaguing the emergency contraceptive pills that they may not be as effective for women who weigh more. Okay. So those were all of the different hormones I could possibly think of to talk about. So let's talk about some of the barrier methods. In the barrier methods, we're just going to try and keep sperm away from eggs. So one way to keep sperm away from eggs is to kill the sperm. So we have different spermicides available on the market that will kill sperm. And um, I just want to say at the top of it, they don't work as well if you use them by themselves. They are best used in conjunction with another barrier like um, a condom or a diaphragm or something else that we're going to be talking about. Um, But they can be used by themselves. And I'll tell you about the effectiveness if you use them by themselves. Um, So these are things that can be bought just in the grocery store or the drug store, usually in the, you know, feminine hygiene area where, um, you know, all things related to reproduction are the pregnancy tests, you know, the tampons, and then the spermicides. Um, And not all the stores will carry all these varieties of spermicides, but um, these are just different ways of delivering the spermicide. So on the top left, you see that can that's labeled Delphin. It's... um, it's full of spermicide that when you shake it up and then you put this applicator on the top, you like screw this ap- applicator onto the top of it and, um, and press down, it'll fill the applicator with foam, uh, really the consistency of like shaving cream. And then you inject that foam with the little applicator that looks a lot like a tampon, um, like a, a tampon applicator. So you inject that into the vagina and then you wait 15 minutes for the spermicide to sort of get all um, acclimated and spread around and, you know, activated by the body, body temperature. And then you have this barrier of the spermicidal foam. On the right hand side is a pre, it's a single use um, preloaded vaginal um suppository of um, spermicidal cream. And so whereas the Delphin has the consistency of foam, the cream has a consistency of like hand lotion. And what you do is you twist that bottom part, that little flappy thing, you twist that and it, it, it pops off. And so now you have an opening in the, in the applicator. And then that top part is actually like a bulb full of air. So for insertion, you would place the, the tip into the vagina, squeeze that bulb, and that'll force the cream into the vagina. And then now, again, you wait 15 minutes so that it can acclimate to the body, get warm, spread around, activated, and then it'll form a barrier. The one on the bottom, vaginal contraceptive film, when you open that package, it's got a little square, of like a one inch square of what has the consistency of like saran wrap. And you put that over your finger, insert it into the vagina and leave it there. And then again, wait 15 minutes so it can get all acclim- acclimated and activated. And now we have a barrier of spermicidal film. So, and it kind of ends up being sort of the consistency of a gel. So you've got Delphin, which is kind of a foam. You've got the, I don't have the brand name on it for you there, but you got the uh, one use applicator that's sort of the consistency of lotion. And then you've got the vaginal contraceptive film that comes out kind of like, um, gel. And once it's been heated up. All right. So those are our different types of spermicides. Okay. How well do they work? Well, if you use it by itself, theoretically, only about 18% of women should become pregnant after a year of using that technique just by itself. Um, In actual use, it's more like 29%. And one of the biggest explanations for that is that people aren't using it correctly. But I mean, theoretically, under best circumstances, it's, you know, twice as likely to result in pregnancy than, let's say, the birth control pill, right? So it's, it's not very, um, it's not very good, but it's better than nothing, that's for sure. The correct use would to u- be to use it with a bar- another barrier method. Condoms are pictured here, but other, you know, latex-based barriers also work. Um, and then the other correct use is you are supposed to let it activate for 15 minutes, So it has that problem of you sort of have to plan ahead, right? Um, The advantages, it's easy to acquire. You, uh, I don't think there are any places where you actually even have to go to the counter to ask for them. A lot of times when you're buying condoms, you have to, in some stores, they'll make you go up to the counter and ask for them because it's, they're so commonly shoplifted. But these spermicidal 
things tend to just be out on the on the shelf, you know, so you don't have to go and ask anybody for it. So it's easy to get, you know, it's less embarrassing. Um, they don't cost that much compared to some of the, you know, these hormonal methods we've been talking about. Um, so they're a little, they're considered inexpensive given their, you know, their, the comparisons. Um, obviously you can use it for, you know, one instance of intercourse and not for another, right? So you can stop using it at any time and return to your, to fertility. And it really has minimal risk. It does have some risks though, but they are minimal. The disadvantages, the minimal risk is really allergies to the um, spermicide or to the, um, the, whatever the spermicide is being suspended in, whether it's the foam or the cream or the, or the film, right? So sometimes people are allergic to those things. It's really wise before you inject, insert something into your vagina that you actually put it on like the inside of your forearm and see if that reacts. <laughs> and if that doesn't get a rash, then you go ahead and insert it into the vagina. Um, you get an increased risk of sexually transmitted infections when it contains nonoxanil 9, which is kind of ironic because nonoxanil 9 is um, actually kills HIV, it kills other viruses and bacteria. But if you're using it, um, if you're using these kinds of spermicidal um, substances really frequently, it can actually cause um, tenderness of the vaginal lining and open up the bloodstream to infection. So it's like has the exact reverse effect as what you would expect. Um, it's not very effective to use it by itself, but I, I would again say it, it's better than nothing. Uh, something I didn't bother to put as a disadvantage, but some people complain about with these is that they are like lubricants basically. And so they can cause um, a lot of, you know, slipperiness and loss of sensation because of that. Um, so it's, you know, that's an additional like complaint. I don't know if it's a disadvantage as much as it, just a complaint. All right, let's talk about the most commonly used barrier method, and that would be the male condom. And uh, I love this video for explaining how to properly use a condom. So I've got it queued up in the playlist and you can watch that. <laughs> 